Good morning church we welcome you all in the name of our lord and savior jesus christ and uh, we are so happy to you know join with you all and i'm also very happy that we have a new member in our church now and we congrats you know we give our greetings and you know we congrat uh, brother jason and shobhna sister for what god has done in their life we are so happy and we are rejoicing with you praise god hallelujah thank you lord for this time lord we you bless this time lord let alone you be glorified father hallelujah hallelujah thank you father lord wherever two or three gather in your name lord you are there hallelujah we bless your name lord we commit this time of worship adoration in your hands father holy spirit lead us to worship the living god hallelujah with truth and with spirit hallelujah thank you jesus Standing, Lord, you 
even more real, hallelujah. Oh, we bless your name, Lord Jesus, hallelujah. Lord, we are here, Lord, in your name, hallelujah. We bless your name, Lord Jesus, hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah, thank you, Father. Lord, help us to overcome, Father, fear and unbelief, Lord, as you're speaking to us, Lord, from, Lord, this month, Father, hallelujah. Help us, Lord. Help our unbelief and fear, Father. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. One man of God, whose name is Bill Johnson, he used to say that, you know, bold faith is rest on the shoulder of quiet trust. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lord, we also want to have bold faith, Father, in you. And Lord, hallelujah, help us to trust in you, Father, in your goodness, in your promises, in your word, Father, hallelujah. Hallelujah, so that we can thank you, Father. For all that you've done, I will thank you. And all that you're going to do, yes, Lord, you are going to do. For all that you promised, and all that you is all that has carried me through Jesus I thank you and I thank you thank you Lord we cry out to you I thank you thank you Lord there is abundance of joy Father hallelujah Lord today we three are here Lord to encounter you Father hallelujah hallelujah we are here Father hallelujah oh hallelujah thank you Jesus hallelujah oh touch us Lord touch all those who are Lord right now worshipping you Lord hallelujah hallelujah hallelujah
situation father hallelujah in every circumstance lord we lift your name hallelujah because your name is above every name hallelujah we declare the name of jesus over the situation hallelujah 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 we declare the name of jesus over darkness hallelujah over sickness hallelujah oh hallelujah we speak lord break through fall hallelujah oh lord for all those who are waiting for you break through fall in the name of jesus we speak father flock 
we are your sheep father hallelujah lord hallelujah and you are the one who guides us lord hallelujah lord you said my sheep hears my voice hallelujah lord lord we are here to hear from you lord jesus hallelujah oh lord hallelujah hallelujah speak to us lord oh lord speak to us father hallelujah oh really lord we want to thank you lord for who you are lord jesus hallelujah oh lord we want your presence father hallelujah hallelujah all the time father no matter lord where we are father hallelujah oh we want you father dedicate once more father our life lord into your hands this life belong to you hallelujah we dedicate our life lord our today lord again father this life belongs to you lord help me help us lord to lose our life for you lord 
thank you for this wonderful time lord and much as i much as i pray amen good morning uh, so wonderful to again talk to you like this and uh, um i hope you all are doing well and um, pressing on in the lord okay so before i begin let me just share you with a joke and uh, so it goes so you know uh, there's this guy he has his uh, online tests you know, the unit test is at 9 and then you know he doesn't do so well and uh, the father he gets the results in the mail and then the father tells him son uh, we need to go to my room and discuss your results and the son says yes daddy on one condition that we will practice social distancing the whole day today <laughs> among us so i thought uh, that was funny yeah so anyways um how we pray before getting to the word heavenly father we acknowledge your goodness and mercy and kindness and we pray we open our eyes to see wonderful things from your word lord uh, anoint us with the wisdom and revelation knowledge of christ fill us with the fullness of your will and all wisdom and understanding we ask and thank you oh lord speak to us we ask and thank you in jesus name you know um even before i read the word i was just reminded of this simple beautiful song that uh, has helped me um so often uh you know and uh, i just want to sing that with you bless the word on to my heart and glorify your name bless the word on to my heart and glorify Bless thy word unto my heart and glorify thy name. Bless thy word unto my heart and glorify thy name. Okay. So today I want to talk to you about the importance of uh you know the love being expressed in mercy. And you know there are so many ways that uh, we can love people. And love is important because you see uh the Lord as um, you know uh made very clear that when someone asked him you know about um, eternal life and the lord said very clearly to him that uh, you know um, he said that the whole law can be summed up in these two commandments you should love the lord your god with all your heart all your mind all your soul and you should love your neighbor as yourself and so you know the lord just made love, made love a really big deal and you see um, love needs to be demonstrated there's no point in telling people i love you if that love is not being demonstrated and you see the lord jesus himself has come and demonstrated his love for mankind by dying on that cross on our behalf for our sins and yes praise be to god who is the sinless death can hold him and he rose on the third day and he lives forever and he ascended and he seated at the right hand of the father and deceding for us so praise be to god but the fact is that he got out of his comfort zone became a man and died for us on that cross so that we who had it was it in damnation now can have eternal life so you see the see the, so we see how the father and the son they demonstrated the great love for us so love has to be demonstrated <laughs> you know you can demonstrate love uh for non believer by sharing the gospel by care acts by praying for them so and like us to believe a community a uh, people in uh in in our own church people in, in other churches we can show them love care acts we can pray for them we can uh you know when we forgive people and we pull, and instead of holding that we bless and release them that's an amazing demonstration of love isn't it so uh, but mercy is very important uh, uh, love needs to be demonstrated and mercy that we receive from god needs to be demonstrated 
It's very important. Um, there's this beautiful verse in the Bible which says that, let your light shine before men in such a way that they will see your good works and glorify God in heaven. Let your light shine before men in such a way that they will see your good works and they'll glorify your Father in heaven. Um, so, and you know, even uh, we told about the Lord that when He was on earth, He went about doing good and healing all oppressed by the devil. So, our Master, when He walked as a man on earth, the Bible tells us He went about doing good and healing all oppressed by the devil. So, uh, it is so important that we uh, understand the value of mercy. And even if you look at uh, in the book of Micah, Micah uh, 6 verse 8, um, we are told, He has told you, man, what is good. And what does the Lord require of you? What does the Lord require of us? Hmm. To do justice. In the times we live, justice is being perverted, isn't it? Hmm. There's so much injustice. And he says, do justice. But what does the require of you? To do justice, to love kindness. In other words, just to love mercy. Be merciful to people. In your dealings with people. God is so merciful to us in Christ, isn't he? <laughs> and then, to walk humbly with your God. So Micah tells us, you know, the, the, this question is asked in Micah 6, 8. He has told you, man, what is good. And what does the Lord require of you? And then the answer comes, but to do justice, to love kindness, to love mercy, and to walk humbly with your God. And so, um, I wanted to encourage you, please. Mercy is something so precious, so important on the heart of the Lord. And, uh, you know, this is a time for us to feast on the mercy that God has shown us in the person of His Son on the cross. And then we need to then also release that mercy to others. We need to be merciful in our dealings with people. In fact, we need to be proactive in having mercy as a lifestyle. And you see, uh, if you really want to walk in uh, God's great favor, that is a portion because of putting our faith in Christ. Mercy is going to be very important to unlock it. It's very, very important. And you see, uh, I've told you this before, I say this again to you. When you became born again, a heavenly bank account was opened for you. And the fullness of salvation was released and put into that heavenly bank account for you. But it doesn't automatically come into your hand, into your possession. As we learn to walk in harmony with the Holy Spirit, He releases, He brings it to us. He releases what's in our account into our possession, to our hand. And so there's great favor. That's going to put it in bank account, but that favor doesn't just automatically come to your lap. The principle of favor that God has. And as we learn to whatever we should walk in those principles of favor, we can see that more and more we can walk in great dimensions of favor. And even about the Lord Jesus, when he came as a man on earth, we are, we are told in the Bible that he grew in favor and stature with God and man. He grew, we are told. He grew in favor and stature in the sight of God. Because you see, when he came here, he came as a man. And all that he did, he did it as a man empowered by the Holy Spirit. But we're told, even he, in his humanity, he, he grew into the dimensions of favor and stature. The side of God in man. And so, so you see, um, favor is important, it's a game changer. And even for us, even to experience greater dimensions of favor exploding in our lives, it's such a game changer. Mercy is one of the important. It's not just a command, it's also a it's also it's also a key that helps us to break forth into deeper dimensions of favor, tangibly breaking forth, and then that makes a tremendous difference in breakthroughs happening or not happening in our journey.
kingdom breakthroughs happen in and through us. And, and I'm telling you, fear is, a, fear is a big deal. It's a big game changer. And you see, we um, we see in, we see also in uh, Proverbs and uh, in three and the verse um, uh, three and uh, four. Look at this: Do not let kindness, do not let kindness, do not let mercy and truth leave you. Bind them on your neck. This is Proverbs three, three and four. Do not let kindness, mercy, do not let kindness and truth leave you. Do not let mercy and truth leave you. Bind them on your neck, write them on the tablet of your heart, so you'll find favor and good repute in the sight of God and mercy is so important. Well, well Micah tells us we're commanded to be merciful. Proverbs tells us that if you want to walk in great favor, if you want to find favor and good repute in the sight of God and man, then love mercy and truth. Tie it on the tablet of your heart. So uh, and but then you see how do we how do we be merciful in a world where many people you know most people around us are self-centered and uh, self-absorbed and you know many times we do mercy to people and they can um, you know hurt us rather than be grateful or thankful and they can betray our trust they just be mean um, sometimes people just seem indifferent after being merciful to them. That way we can feel used after you must have fall. But you see, we need to do mercy and kindness, not to please people, but unto God and expect reward from Him. And He's a great rewarder. The Bible says that they who come to God must believe that God is and that He's a reward of those who seek Him diligently. And so God is a great rewarder. And we and we do mercy, not because we want to draw any points with people. We will do mercy if we want to please our God. There's so much on his heart and so many blessings on life. And uh, mercy can be shown and demonstrated in so many ways. Forgiving people, not holding grudges, blessing people, releasing people, praying for people, share the gospel with the believer, care acts. Oh, such an important aspect of mercy. You know, this is a time we need to go looking. We should, we should be constantly people who have to act looking. To whom can I show mercy? As for the real wisdom of God, the real ways of God. You know, uh, in Philippians 1, Paul says something brilliant. He says that, I pray that you abound in love according to sound knowledge and all discernment. We need our hair acts, our acts of mercy, temporal wisdom, God, the discernment that we get from God. That's so important. You know, uh, I'm so grateful that uh, we as a church, you know, we have a team for the last couple of months we've been going out and we've been having these feeding programs and, uh, you know, we are practically, what are we doing? We are practically looking for people to whom we can show mercy for Jesus' sake. And I'm telling you, we have experienced, the team that goes, we have experienced his pleasure. A witness of his pleasure on the inside, he is so precious. As we've gone around giving uh, these, uh, uh, you know, uh, food packets to the poor and the marginalized in our city, we have experienced a, you know, we have this witness, this pleasure of what we were doing. And we continue, and we're going to continue to do this, uh, you know, for some more time. But you see, the fact is, we are, you know, we, but you see, we need to get out of our comfort zone. And then we look, we're practically looking for people in the city to whom we can show mercy for Jesus' sake. He was so merciful and kind to us. He has been so merciful and so kind to us. And you know, David understood these things. And that's what you see, if you, if you look at his life, yes, he was not that but yes, he made all mistakes. But you know what? He was a very merciful man. And he was this worshiper who loved to worship God. And he was a worshiper. And you see, God so loves and seeks to worship. And so this man was a true worshiper. And he understood the importance of mercy, you see. 
and you know uh, he was a guy who would uh, practically on looking for people whom he could choose he could show mercy <laughs> so i was talking to about david and i said david understood the importance of mercy as a lifestyle if you are going to break into greater dimensions of favor that are the stepping people and you see uh, i said we need to be proactively looking for opportunities to be merciful as per the revealed will and ways of god as per, as per the wisdom of god and if you look at uh, uh, you know to samuel 9 uh, you, you you know you will see that and it's very precious and in to samuel 9 that and you know and the, and now by now you see david is uh, established as the king is loved by the people he is having victories over many of the of the neighboring countries uh, he is being uh, highly respected and uh, it's like you know this is the at this point of time these are the golden years of david and at this time when things really good really going to be great for him. <laughs> you know we're in a challenging time and i'm I, and i'm I, and i am encouraging you nudging you hey god is so much good you go and show mercy but you see he was a guy when he was in his golden years even then he was looking for opportunities to be merciful because he knew how much god was his mercy and you know david is called the man after god's own heart how do you become man after god's own heart you start valuing things in god's heart hallelujah you start giving weight to things in god's heart our god really values mercy and his demonstrated his great love and mercy for us on the cross hallelujah So to Samuel nine, and this, and as I said, David, this is the golden age of David. And so, David says, said, uh, to Samuel nine one, is there yet anyone left of the house of Saul that I may show him kindness for Jonathan's sake? You know, God the Father shows us kindness for Jesus' sake, <laughs> and we must go and show people mercy and kindness for Jesus' sake. He has been so kind to us, and we need to be merciful. For Jesus, sake. you know, I'm I'm reminded, you know, of, of uh, it's a he says he says I will show kindness. Is there anyone left of the household of Saul to whom I can show kindness for Jonathan? Say, um, you know, there are times when, uh, you know, um, even if you know, I remember there was a time when I was not at home and someone, one of my friends, school friends, came and he said, you know, uh, I I'm so and so, and my mother heard his name and she knew he was my friend. And for my sake, you know, my mother. Was warm in hospital for my sake because I was near it. He was near it, sir. The near it, sir. And you see, God the Father is so merciful to us because we put our faith in the finished work of the cross for Jesus' sake. There's so much mercy that's constantly extended to us. And now, for Jesus' sake, we must go and be merciful to the world around us. Hallelujah. And you know, the only way, the only way we're going to remain merciful. Is we need to keep feasting on the red mercy God has shown us in the person of His Son through the finished work of the cross, and we can we can also take time to feast on uh, other places where the witnesses, inspired by the Lord, have shown mercy to others. For example, passages like this that I'm reading to right now, one Samuel. So, verse two. So he's asking. So now David is asking, "Is anyone left for the house of Saul to whom I may show kindness for Jonathan's sake?" Verse two. Now there was a servant of the house of Saul, whose name was Ziba, and they called him to David. And the king said to him, "Are you Ziba?" And he said, "I am your servant." The king then said, "Is there not yet any one of the house of Saul to whom I may show the kindness of God? I may show the kindness of God." He is proactively looking, even in his golden years. David is proactively looking for opportunities to be merciful because he knew how much God values mercy. How much mercy was important for his own life. The mercy of which he received mercy, mercy transferred judgment. <laughs> Amen. And Ziba said to the king, "There is still a son of Jonathan who is crippled in both feet." And the king said to him, "Where is he?" And Ziba said to the king, "Behold, he is in the house of Meshir, the son of Amiel, in Lodibar." And then the king David sent and brought him to the house of Meshir, the son of Amiel, from Lodibar. Meth. Mephibosheth, you know, I I can't struggle with this nonsense with him, so bear with me. Mephibosheth, the son of Jonathan, the son of Saul, came to David and fell on his face and prostrated himself. And David said, 
Mephibosheth and he said, here's your servant. And David said to him, do not fear, but I'll surely show kindness to you for the sake of your father, Jonathan, and restore to you all the land of your grandfather's soul. All the land. Please hear this. Restore to you all the land of your grandfather's soul and you shall eat at my table regularly. Wow. I will restore to you all the land of your grandfather's soul and you eat at my table regularly. Again he prostrated himself and he said, and, and this boy is saying, What is a servant that you should regard a dead dog like me? How much this boy's esteem has been beaten down. Look at how he views himself. He thinks he's, you know, he's a dead dog. He doesn't even think that he deserves mercy of kindness from the king David. And look at how much he's beaten now. Look at how he views himself. He looks at, you know, he's, you know, the mouth speaks of fullness of the heart. He looks at himself as a dead dog. He is so beaten down. He's a cripple. And you know, we were so beaten down and so crippled by sin in so many ways before the Lord Jesus came into our lives. Hallelujah. And just changed our lives. He was a cripple physically. And you know, often people who are crippled physically, very often they become crippled in the inside. And you know, and on the other hand, it doesn't need to be that way. And you know, because of, because of sin, because of the fall, oh, man has got crippled and twisted inside. Because of the sin machine that came from Adam and has been given to us all. You know, we're so crippled because of various manifestations of sin. And we so need the salvation that the Lord just offers to the cross. And you know what? Praise be to God. We were crippled in so many ways, internally, externally. And then the Lord Jesus came into our lives because we're just of the finished work of the cross, the good news of Christ. And what happened? It began to change how we viewed ourselves. And he convinced us that now you're a glorious new creation. Hallelujah. And we know we no longer looked at ourselves in ways that were unhealthy for us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And the king called Saul's servant uh, Zimba and said to him, All that belonged to Saul and to his house, I am giving to your master's grandson. Wow, man, that's you know, David, he had tasted mercy and he had tasted how God is a God who lavishes mercy. You know, he's not just giving, you know, he's just not, not sprinkling a few drops of mercy on this kid. David is really, you know, emptying his bowl of mercy on this guy. He's amazing. And you know, God, you know, I've tasted my own life. God is lavish in mercy and kindness to his coming people. Hallelujah, hallelujah. And, uh, you know, uh, uh, I want to say this again to you. Because of the fall, man has been crippled in so many different ways in his, in, on the inside. And we see that manifestation on the outside. Then with all the chaos and all the confusion in the world we live in, we see it. And praise be to God when we said, yes, the good news of our Lord Jesus Christ. And he came into our heart, our lives. He began to heal us from the inside out. And he began to deal with the crippling effect of sin in our lives. And you see, when he says, yes to Lord, he gives, you know, he gives a death blow to the sin machine in us that we inherited from Adam when he sinned. And we find a newness of life. We find that we are a new creature. And sin is no longer having dominion over us. And we find that by the power of the Holy Spirit, we can break through manifestations of sin and we can walk in victory in places we never thought we could. Hallelujah. And we see how when the Lord comes and lives on inside of us and he begins to speak to us about our new identity in Christ. And as a view changes of how we perceive ourselves, a Lord of healing comes, a Lord of deliverances come. And they manifest in, 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 in amazing breakthroughs in, in so many areas of our life. And then we become people who can help others to break through many, many ways. And we can see then God can trust and uh, so many pressures for his kingdom. And we can find kingdom breakthroughs operate in and through us. And his kingdom going forward in and through us. Hallelujah.
Hallelujah. And he says, and look at how generous David is, David is in his mercy, because he definitely experienced from God. He experienced God as God is generous in mercy. And then the king called Saul's servants, he verse 9 and said to him, All that belongs to Saul into his house, I have given to him master's grants. And you and your sons and your servants will cultivate the land for him. And you shall bring the produce so that your master's grandson may have food. Nevertheless, a few that your master's grandson shall eat at my table regularly. Now, this is amazing. Look at the wisdom also in the mercy that David is lavishing on his boy. He knows he's a cripple. He can't cultivate land. Even if he gives him all the land of his grandfather, he still can't cultivate it. So he's telling this guy, he's saying, you. He's telling this guy, Ziba, that you and your sons and your servants will cultivate this land for him. And you will bring all the produce so that your master's grandson may have food. Nevertheless, this boy will eat at my table regularly. Hallelujah. So we see, not only that God is lavish in his mercy, God is also also very wise in how he exhibits mercy. And those who are inspired by God, those who have a communion life with God, they find that they're getting affected by how God is merciful. And so we see here, David is so much affected by how God shows mercy. There's a lavishness in the way he mercy to his boy, and so much wisdom in the way he shows mercy to his child. Hallelujah. Now Ziba had 15 sons and 20 servants. And Ziba said to the king, According to all that the Lord the king's commanded to servant, so your servant will do. So Mephibosheth ate at David's table as one of the king's sons. Wow. Wow. So David takes this boy, who's a cripple, for Jonathan's sake, and embraces him as his own son. And releases to him all the land of his grandfather. And then he knows the cripples are cultivated. He tells one of his servants that you and your son will cultivate the land and bring the produce for him. And we are told that he, this boy, ate regularly at his table as one of his sons. Hallelujah. You know, this is so much reminds us of what's happened to the cross. We were people crippled by sin, beaten on by sin, many manifestations of sin. And God comes along and gives us salvation as a free gift. And then, not, you know, we're told that those who put their faith in Christ, they become sons of God. And he made us a son. He got to people like us who were beaten now by sin. Many manifestations of sin twisted on the inside. Crippled on the inside, in many ways because of sin. And the sin machine that lives in us, that, that we got from the first Adam when we were born. And God got dead built to that sin machine as we said yes to the cross. And God began to change us from the inside out, to heal us from the inside out. God began to give deliverances of many manifestations of sin from the inside out. He, he gave death to the sin machine. And, and we saw healing coming, so deliverances coming, and there's a wholeness coming, and we saw all manner of shalom breaking forth in so many ways in our lives. And all this happened because God proactively, proactively, proactively chose to do this. God sent us up proactively so that people like us will not perish, but will turn around with Him. And you know, God is the one who practically went after us. The Bible says that, you know, He has no, you know, if, if you are right in Christ, you know, one thing you should know, the Bible tells us that He has known you through the foundation of the world. And predestined to hold and blame the before him. Look at Ephesians, go to Ephesians chapter 1. And in time, he got a, he got a hand with you. Saw you from eternity and never hold you in time. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God is the reason of our dignity, the wholeness, what a damaged wholeness we experience. And you see, what's so amazing is God could have, you know, given us a few drops of mercy and let us be, but no. He so lavish in his mercy. One manifestation of his lavishness of mercy was he made us sons and daughters. We have been adopted into the household of God because we said yes to God's offer of mercy in the person of his son, Christ. Hallelujah. We 
who put our faith in Christ now have become sons and daughters of God and we eat at this table. And we flourish because we eat at this table. Through the finished work of the cross, God has set before us a great table. The finished work of the cross has set has resulted in a great table being set before us to partake of. And there's all manner of help at that table for us to do well and flourish, and through us many would do well and flourish. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So you see, we see to this chapter how there was, you know, it's a beautiful picture of the kind of mercy that God practically shows. And so so was verse eleven we finished, and then we see that. Mephibosheth had a young son whose name was Micah, and all who lived in the house of Ziba were servants to this boy. And so Mephibosheth lived in Jerusalem, for he ate at king's table regularly. Now he was living both his feet. But you know what? He, he ate at David's table as one of the sons of the king. And so you see, um, we see here that David understood. That mercy is very important and precious to God's heart. And he understood it. Mercy is going to be very precious for his own journey. If he has to do well. On a, and for me, what's, what's most amazing is, you know, you know, in this time of the pandemic, many people have been beaten down. And many people are thinking, okay, you know, man, maybe if I do some kindness, mercy, maybe God will be pleased and he'll help me. You know. Uh, but you see, a lot of, but see, God doesn't want a care acts to be a result of a defiled conscience. I have not been living right in the sight of God, so, you know, God will punish me, and so maybe if I do some care acts, and, you know, maybe, you know, God will then be kind to me, and, you know, you know, many times acts of kindness can be a fruit of a defiled conscience. No, 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 that's not what I'm talking about. <laughs> the blood of Jesus, we do cleanses our conscience. I am talking about our inspiration for mercy should come because we are we are so being awakened to how merciful God has been to me in the person of Christ. Hallelujah. And so, you know, we can only give people out of the abundance of what we receive. And so what I would encourage you is, please, especially in these difficult times, please take time to come in with God over the finished work of the cross. The mercy God the Father has shown us in the person of His Son. Through the work of the cross. What a free gift we have got of salvation. And take time also to feast on how inspired by the Lord, the witness in the Bible has shown mercy to people. And you'll find empowerment to merciful. And then when you're being merciful, you'll find how God releases mercy, favor on your own life that has already been put into your heavenly man, but that's has come to your possession. And you will just find, as as I read, deeper dimensions of favor explode in and through you. And I'm telling you, favor is a mighty game changer. In, in one of the songs, we are told that the Israelites did not win this battle in the promised land by their own arm. But we are told, but it is you favored them. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The merciful shall receive mercy. Mercy transfer over judgment. Mercy is a great protection. For us. So I encourage you, please. As, you know, may the Lord help us that mercy will become a lifestyle for us. And how much more at a challenging time like this, we go, we should go looking for people to be merciful. And we show mercy as per the wisdom of God, as per the will and ways of God, not in foolishness. You read how David showed mercy in wisdom to this world. And David was lavish in his mercy and kindness. So I, this is my prayer that this sermon will encourage you to grow in showing mercy as a lifestyle and that your mercy is going to be lavish and this mercy of yours is going to be tempered by the wisdom of God. And the result will be many thanksgivings will be produced to God because you Showed mercy to people, inspired by the Holy Spirit, inspired by the revealed will and ways of God. Hallelujah. And that mercy that you show is going to so bless your own life and the life of others. But remember this, we can't show mercy by willpower. 
we need to commune with God. And when we awaken to how much God is merciful to us in the person of Christ, to the finished work of the cross, and then we find that the more we are awakened, how much mercy we've received from the Father in heaven, the more we can mercy full to people around us. And that mercy is important, those acts of mercy are important, they unlock things for us that are already put into our account. A heavenly account. Mercy unlocks stuff. And, and you know, we find a lot, you know, for example, we read faith. <laughs> you know, if, if you don't, if you try to not let truth and kind of go, then what happens? If I'm favor and good inside of our man, and so mercy inspired by the Holy Spirit, what happens? In the Holy Spirit, it, we find that, that we are able to break through. There's mercy, in your, there's favor, great terms of your account, it comes into your hand. And it just begins to, you, you know, tremendously change the experience of breakthroughs. I am free. Hallelujah. 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 Okay, so now I'd like you to join me in prayer. Heavenly Father, we are so grateful for your great mercy you've shown us in the person of Christ. Through the finished work of the cross. Lord, all the good in our life is because of the finished work of the cross. Teach us to glory only in the finished work of the cross. Oh, we give praise, we give thanks, we give glory, we give you honor. Lord, Help us to grow in having mercy as a lifestyle. Lord, it's not just commanded. We also see how much it opens up an opportunity for us to partake of shalom that has been put into account and how it comes into our hand. Lord, help us to grow in walking in harmony with the Holy Spirit. Oh, Lord God. So that we can find the more we in alignment with the Holy Spirit, the more we can find shalom breaking for them and through us. Oh, Lord, help us, Lord, to be proactive and show mercy to people as a lifetime, especially at a difficult time like this. So that Lord, your name is glorified and we pick for more and more in the deeper dimensions of shalom that your blood has purchased for us. Oh, help us Lord, that help us Lord, that our light will shine before men in such a way that they will see our good works and they will glorify you, our Father in heaven. Oh, help us Lord, help us as individuals of the church to grow and walk in deeper dimensions of mercy. Oh, hallelujah, Father, I want to just thank you for mercy and kindness and well, thank you, Father, that, Lord, we see in India the recovery rate is so high from coronavirus. Thank you. We see mortality rate is low and we're grateful. And, Lord, the people who are sick right now coronavirus, Lord, we bring them to you. We rebuke every force of darkness, salting them. We, we, we now, Lord, God, apply our blood on them. We invoke the healing which you have blood over them. We just speak life for the people right now who are beaten on coronavirus. We just speak breakthrough, healing, and health. Also, Lord, we apply our blood on all the frontline warriors against coronavirus, the doctors, the nurses, the paramedics. The government officials will apply blood on them, look at hand of protection, provision. Establish the work of the hands of these medical people, Lord. Dear Lord God, and protect them, Lord. Please help them. Uh, bless the work of the hands, Lord, and let many lives be saved. Lord, also give wisdom to our Prime Minister, our Chief Minister, various other British other countries, Lord God, and to work together with the business leaders of the nations and other nations, and that, Lord, uh, they can uh, take measures, creative solutions for the economy to do better. And also, Lord, that all these political leaders of various countries, including our country, poor countries, even African countries, oh Lord God, that uh, uh, that Lord, you give us the political leaders to create also a good medical infrastructure to, to deal with coronavirus issues. And oh Lord God, uh, we just pray that Lord, you will bring healing and break. Also, Father, so many parts of the country have seen floods. We just cry to you, Lord, of oh God of mercy. Oh Lord, give deliverance and also give wisdom to the chief ministers of the various states like uh, Assam and Bihar and in Maharashtra and West Bengal. Just give wisdom to the chief ministers and to the central government to bring adequate relief and rehabilitation measures for these people. Oh Father in heaven, Lord God, help us Lord to just grow in honoring you. Help us please to grow in giving weight, when we wait to what you think. Oh Lord Jesus, help us, help us Lord. Help us, Lord God. Open our eyes to see who we are in Christ. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Lord, help us, Lord Jesus, at this time. Oh, Lord, the church, to be sensitive to your voice and to point many to the hope that is in Christ. God, may the heart of the non believers stand with you that they, rather than you in hopeless mess, will find hope in you, oh, Lord God, and see good. Oh, we give you praise, we give you thanks, we give you glory, we give you honor. 
Oh Lord, I commend your people to you. I, I commend Lord our, our current church members, our diaspora people. Oh Lord, all those watching this uh, video recording, Lord, this uh, right now, this uh, online service, I just commend them to you and your word, which will build them up and give them the inheritance in the sanctity of God. I just bless them. The love of the Father, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit from now and forevermore. So, um, I want to encourage you, uh, keep pressing on, and the major seven inspire you to grow into your mercy of the lifestyle. And remember, do not let truth and mercy leave you. Tie it on the tablet of your heart, and then you'll find favor and glory to God in man. And for us, a tremendous dimension of favor is already the day said yes to the finished work of the cross, the day you put your faith in Christ. A heavenly background is open, amazing dimension of favor is put into that account. But you know, the difference in things being into a heavenly account to your possession. And mercy unlocks these tremendous dimensions of favor and brings them into your hand by the help of the Holy Spirit, by the empowering the Holy Spirit. And so, uh, well, I'd also encourage you, as you know, especially in your church family, you are a family, every local church is a family, a spiritual family. And please love one another, encourage one another. Please call each other. Please encourage each other. And uh, you know, please, please don't just leave it to the pastor and his wife to encourage. <laughs> I know that I'm thankful. Many of you, I hear, encourage each other, call each other. And I just want to keep encouraging you. Let's excel even more in loving one another. And uh, uh, you know, uh, I'm thankful for each one of you who takes the pains to call up others, encourage others, and pray for others. Uh, let's continue and uh, to love another because you're a family and to pray for another and also encourage you please prayer is important uh, let's please keep uh, uh, you know uh, coming for the prayer meeting online prayer meeting let's keep praying for our nation you know i've, I've just so stirred up i've shared this before with you by the this uh quote of billy graham that i read that he said you know if the nations are to you know what's going on I'm so happy now he said if the nations are to rise up the church has to get on its knees and right now, the nations of the world are beaten down. And if the nations of the world are beaten down, need to rise up again. Oh, I tell you, the church of God has to get down on its knees. That's what will happen. The healing of the nations will come as a result, as a response to the fervent intercession of the church. I can't encourage you enough. We need to pray. Together. So please, let's please join, at least for one of the two prayer meetings in the week that we have. Each one of you, please say you are really joined to one of the prayer meetings that we have in the week and come and let's pray together for our nation. Let's come pray together for our church and for the nations. Okay, God bless you. You have a wonderful week ahead. Keep shining for the Lord and we love you so much. Me, my wife, our elder, our other leaders, we love you so much uh, in your church family and we are praying for you expecting wonderful things for you and I am so encouraged I am so encouraged to your testimonies of how God is meeting some goodness from God and how the Lord is opening up uh, rivers of the desert for many of you in these difficult times I just praise God and rejoice with you all right God bless you have a wonderful weekend